Princeton, Illinois. Welcome to Indiana University basketball. Tonight, the Wildcats of Northwestern 0-1 of the Big Ten season are facing the Hoosiers also 0-1. Hello, everybody. I'm Chuck Marlowe along with John Laskowski, and we're just about set to bring you another big Big Ten game. John, very important for the Hoosiers. It really is. We got off to a bad start Thursday against Michigan State. I think it was a matter of the guards were just too quick, and we didn't contain him enough for Michigan State. Northwestern is led by Jim Stack. He's 6'8". He plays underneath, averages about 15 points a game. They've got to shut him off, but I think uh, more importantly, uh, it doesn't really matter what Northwestern does. It's more a matter of how Indiana plays. They, they've lost three games in a row now, and they themselves can decide their own fate. So it's Indiana that's going to have to dictate how well they play tonight, and they're going to have to stop Stack. We'll return with the starting lineups in just a moment. Whatever happened to the guy who took pride in his work? Morning. Go up. You bet. Who wasn't too big to remember the little things? Check the oil and water? Sure. Who did things because he wanted to, not because he had to. Today, Mr. Riley, you'll be back on the road sooner than you thought. That's great. He works for Farm Bureau Insurance. In today's marketplace, there are more effective investment alternatives than ever before. That's why American Fletcher National Bank now offers the Old Saver Certificate, the alternative that allows you up to $2,000 tax-free interest. And the minimum deposit is only $500. Visit any American Fletcher Banking Center for full details. The Old Saver Certificate, the alternative that makes your part of the American dream a little bigger. American Fletcher National Bank those extra special moments alive forever with Big Shot 35 color prints from your neighborhood Hooks dependable drugstore. Our new Big Shot 35 process gives you extraordinary 4 by 6 inch color prints from your 35 millimeter film. They're extra big, bright, and glossy using only Kodak paper for a good look with expert photo finishing by Levers. Capture those special moments with Big Shot 35 color prints from your Hooks dependable drugstore. Once again, a crowd, a capacity house, one of the rare few that they've had here. John, it only seats 72 or 7,300. What was it like when you came in here playing with the Hoosiers back in 75? Well, I'll tell you, the one good thing about playing at Northwestern is that there are a lot of Indiana fans in the Chicago area, and they really showed up today. There's a lot of red, probably more red than we'll see at any other visiting school, so it's not too bad at Northwestern. The crowd is about 8,000, but maybe one or 2,000 are Indiana fans. Indiana has not lost to Northwestern since 1969. Bobby Knight has never lost to the Wildcats. Bobby is in his 11th year. His Big Ten record is 237 and 72. That's including last Thursday night's loss to Michigan State. Here is Ted Ketchell. He'll be starting at one forward from Galveston, Indiana, 6'8", and a junior. Indiana starting at uh, now for Northwestern starting at one forward position Jim Stack they will use the Big Ten alternate system Jim Stack is 6'8 220 in the senior from Chicago there's John Flowers Fort Wayne South he is 6'9 a freshman Andre D-O-D-E, 6'10", 225 of the freshman. The other forward for Northwestern. Uwe Bluff, Munich, Germany, played his high school ball at Effingham, Illinois. Will be jumping center for Indiana. And at the center position for Northwestern, Bob Grady, 6'9", 225 of the senior from Beloit, Wisconsin. The Hoosiers will be starting Randy Whitman out of Indianapolis, played at Ben Davis High School. He is a junior, 6'6". Gaddis Rathel will start at one guard for the Wildcats, 6'6", 195, a junior. Gaddis, a Chicago product. And the other guard for Indiana, number 11, a freshman for the Hoosiers, Dan Dockish, Gary Andrea. For Northwestern, Michael Jenkins, number three, 6'2", 180, and a junior out of Chicago. 
And there are the starting lineup. It's Kitchell, Flowers, Flop, Whitman, and Dockett for Indiana. The yeah. lineup's there. As you see, Flowers is going to be guarding Stack. Coach Knight feels that Flowers is quick enough to be able to stay with Stack, and his big responsibility today will not be to score as much as it is to watch Stack. If Stack can get 25 points, it's going to hurt Indiana. So Flowers' job will be to guard him. We'll see how good a job he does. John Michael Jenkins is uh, not a scorer. He apparently is the playmaker of this, of this team. Uh, 24 assists, but he also gets the board well. So far this season, 24 rebounds. Uh, it doesn't really sound like too much over 10 games, but a 2.4 and for a guard that does uh, have the ability to set the play from the top, that's quite a bit on the board. Exactly. They're running one more offense, and he'll be the point guard. There are your officials for tonight, Bill Herzog, Bill Bova, and George Solomon. We're just about ready to get underway. We have uh, hesitated in mentioning it because we know you're having some bad weather back in Indiana and other areas carrying tonight's broadcast on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. The wind chill factor at game time tonight was 64 degrees below zero in Chicago. I imagine it's uh, just about that cold. Uh, down in Bloomington, they're anticipating 17 below when the team gets back tonight. We're all set to get underway. 0-1 Hoosiers against the 0-1 Wildcats in Big Ten competition, and the tip is controlled by Northwestern. 32 is Grady. This is Michael Jenkins as they go from our left to right. Jenkins across the top, guarded by Whitman. Inside turnaround by Stack is right there. Jim Stack with the first two points of the game. He averages 15.4. And he puts the Wildcats in front 2 nothing. Dockish crossed the line. And a turnover call against Indiana as Dockish couldn't get through the prostrate Gaddis Rathel call for travel. Northwestern the first time down the floor went to their bread and butter, that stack. They want him to have a good night. And then they went on to a three-four court trap to cause a turnover against Indiana. Jenkins. underneath and they're going to have a foul on Ted Ketchell as Ted pursued the ball. He came over the shoulder of the Wildcat. First personal foul against Ketchell. And Ted we have seen John in recent games getting a little bit more into foul trouble. Is it because he's more into the action or just out of position? Well, I think Good just made a good play going toward the basket. He's hard to check out. Ted got the foul. Reaching over the top. We're going to have a foul called on Uwe Flop. Flop at 7-2 with a height advantage on his man on the eighth, and he got his arm over the top and came across the shoulder. Well, so the Hoosiers off to a shaky start here, although trailing 2-0, they picked up two quick fouls and have not had a penetration offensively into their own court. Here's Jenkins. Farm Bureau Insurance, your host for tonight's game. Now to Gattis Rathel. And we have a whistle out on top. George Solomon blows the whistle, and let's check it. We have a foul. I think it's going to be against 25, Jim Stack. It is. Stack's first, and I didn't see anything. It was all away from the ball. Could have been moving, uh, moving pitch. Or, uh, well, the ball was in the corner, and the referee that made the call was the one at half court. So, obviously, he had a better view away from the ball to see that foul. All right, up quickly. Quickly, the release to Doc. Malone will not take the shot. Looks for the alone he fires he scores I think we're going to see Indiana take a few more outside shots especially Whitman to the top of the key coach felt that against Michigan State they were able to sag back and clog the middle up which caused so many turnovers because the guards didn't take enough shots outside Jenkins all alone on a good pick out on the top by Northwest for the jump no no jump ball uh, whistle three seconds no it's a foul well the official on the gave a line indication but then swung his hand up and pointed to Randy Whitman. Personal foul. Northwestern doing a good job on the board so far. There's Grady with the ball. A slap by Whitman caused a loose ball. That's Randy's first team foul number three against Indiana. Northwestern with the ball. We're tied at two. And we have played nearly two minutes. First half. Jenkins as Whitman closes up. With Bell. Uh, whistle underneath. Foul. 44. 
And that's Andre Good picking up his first. So there's a lot of physical and maybe a lot of infighting we're not seeing, John. Kitchell had good position that time, and Good used an elbow to try to back him up and get that better position. The referee called for the foul. Northwestern putting full court pressure against the Hoosiers. This we had noticed uh, in the Michigan State game Saturday night, or Thursday night, really, John had caused the Hoosiers a lot of trouble. As the Spartans kept that pressure on basically throughout the entire game. Kitchell moves inside, ball is knocked away, and it's going to be out of bounds in the end. Defensively, Northwestern will be in a 2-3 and sometimes a 3-2 zone. Again, trying to clog that middle up, and they want to force Indiana to shoot from the outside. Whitman takes it inside. Whistle, offensive foul. Randy Whitman. Again, Randy, who has, from time to time, had such generous opportunities on that little baseline drive this time. Northwestern holds it down. Sometimes that lane's going to be open. Randy's a good, smart player, and he's going to realize that when the, when the man's there, he's got to stop and take that little 10-foot shot, which he's very good at. And I'm sure in the sec later on in the game now he'll be able to do that. Second personal against Whitman. Fourth against Indiana. We're still tied in. Stack. Free throw line. Good. Jim Stack has four. Northwestern has four. That's how Stack can hurt you. If he can get to that purple area here at Northwestern and get the ball inside, he's only 10 feet from the basket. John Flowers has got to play off when the ball's on the weak side. And if Stack makes his cut in the middle, he's got to cut him off. Flowers inside, off the glass and good. John Flowers arched it high, found the range, and we're tied at four. Andre Good, with his six point, he averages seven points through a game. 28-16. Fires. Good rebounds. Out to Adrian. 49 seconds. Now Northwestern will play for that shot. With 39 seconds. And the Hoosiers are really going to have to put it together in the second half if they want to get back in this game. Good on the give and go. Wessel, we're going to have a foul. Well, apparently so. On number 20, that would be Jim Thomas. with a one and one. Okay. Looked like it was a close call between traveling or a foul on Jim Thomas as the referee blew his whistle. I think most of the Indiana kids thought that it would be traveling, started down the other end of the floor, and then turned out to be a foul. They've sort of cut back to the basket. Here's Rafael's second up good. Rafael has four, 17 seconds left, and Northwestern comes all the way back. They'll let Indiana bring it up without a contest. 16 is the score. 14 point deficit. Inside pass for Fuji. North Preston just gets right in the pass right. Blocked away. The ball by Aaron is good. City, 1897. Paul Dresser, one of America's most popular songwriters, reminisces about his boyhood and his home. Round my Indiana homestead wave the cornfields. In the distance loom the woodlands clear and cool. Oftentimes my thoughts revert to scenes of childhood.
lights fair tonight along the wall from the fields there comes the breath of new moon hay through the sycamores the candle lights are gleaming on the banks of the wabash far away Insurance.